always good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. In His presence, always there is deliverance. In His presence, there is healing. In His presence, there is fullness of joy. Amen. So this morning, what I am going to share, the message titled, God expects each and every one of us to grow in His character. In other words, we have to grow in our character. Can you read uh, Colossians chapter 3, verses 9 to 11? When I say that we have to grow in our character, you may mean, we may think what it means to grow in our character. So that's the thing we are going to see today. Colossians chapter 3, verses 9 to 11, please. Book of Colossians chapter 3, verses 9 to 11. Amen. So notice first that Paul tells us to put off, put off certain things. He says, put off your old self. Amplified version says, for you have stripped off the old self and its evil practices. In other words, we have to put off certain things, sinful practices, such as anger, wrath, malice, etc. So all the old things we must put off. The word used there, put off and putting on, is like changing your cloth, taking your cloth and putting a new cloth. That same word is used there. So Paul was saying, put off sinful practices. But Paul doesn't stop there. As we read, he doesn't just want us to take off these sinful practices, but replace them with new things. He says we have to put on the new self, which is being renewed in the image of its creator. Amen? Image of his creator. Put on. Put on. Put on the new self in the image of its creator. What is this image he wants us to be renewed or created in, recreated in? Is nothing else. It's the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We must grow in the image of Christ. Uh, go with me to Galatians chapter 4 verse 19. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 19. So I'm reading from Amplified Version. My little children for whom I am again in the pains of labor until Christ is completely and permanently formed within you. In other words, Paul was saying that Christ should be formed in you completely and permanently. Christ must form that. In other words, Christ's character must come in your life. Again, if you go with me to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 13, there Paul is saying something similar to the church in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 13. Can I read that please? Ephesians 4, 13. Until we reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Yeah, yeah they, he's saying, become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. I am reading the same verse from Amplified Version. Until we all reach oneness in the faith, or unity in the faith, and in the knowledge of the Son of God, growing spiritually to become a mature believer, reaching to the measure of the fullness of Christ, that is main, manifesting his spiritual com completeness, and exercising our spiritual gifts in unity. We must mature, we must grow, in his character. So Paul is talking about putting on or forming the character of Christ in us. Christ's character tells. Christ's character. So same thing if you go with me to uh, the letter written by Peter, 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 and 4. So Peter is using the term instead of uh, Christ's character, he's saying that he's using a term godliness. He says we can partake in, partake in the divine nature which is Christ. Can read 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. 
His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by the evil desires. So he has said you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. So as children of God, in other words, Paul and Peter, they are repeating the same thing. We must mature in our character. We must become more like Christ. Amen. So both Peter and uh, Paul are saying that God wants to form Jesus, Jesus' character in us. So if you go further, what Peter was saying, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 to 7, please. Then Peter goes on to the name. Go, uh, goes on to name certain character, characters there. We can read that. First, Second Peter chapter 1 verses 5 to 7. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. So these are some character traits uh, Peter was adding. So I'm reading the same thing in Amplified Version 5 to 7. For this very reason, apply your diligence to the divine promises. Make every effort in exercising your faith to develop moral excellence and in moral excellence, knowledge, insight, understanding, and in your knowledge, self-control, and in your self-control, steadfastness, and in your steadfastness, godliness, and in your godliness, brotherly, brotherly affection, and in your brotherly affection, develop Christian love, that is, learn to unselfishly seek the best for others and do things for their benefit. So the scripture uses a variety of interchangeable terms to refer to these traits. Different uh, terms are used. So Peter was using the word godliness. So Paul was saying about the character, the fullness of Christ. So if you go further, if you read uh, Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 14, there Paul is using the word holiness. He is making a list of holiness lists, I can say. I am reading from King James Version, Colossians chapter 2, verses 12 to 4. Put on therefore, as the elect of God, holy and blood, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving, forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, you also do it. And above all these things, put on charity, which is love, which is the bond of perfectness. So here Paul was saying about holiness, list, he is giving a list. Again, if you, uh, the fam, uh, family and known verse is in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. We call those things as fruit of the Spirit, fruit of the Holy Spirit. There again, there is another list given by Paul. Uh, fruit of the uh, Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So a lot of things are given, a lot of traits are given, all the characters of Jesus. In other words, we have to grow or we have to mature. So that we can become more like Christ. Amen. So this character traits must reflect in our lives. Even First Corinthians chapter 13. You all know those uh, verses. First Corinthians chapter 13. Speaking about the love of God. There again you can see certain things Paul has mentioned. Again the character of Jesus. So we can see these words are interchangeable. Paul, sometimes Paul is using fruit of the spirit. Uh, Peter was using the word godliness. So in godliness list, Peter has include, include certain things which is in the other list also. Goodness, self-control, kindness and love. Also fruit of the spirit. Paul has included other things in the other portions. In, uh, in the love list in 1 Corinthians, he has included uh, three traits found in the Paul's list of uh, holiness. In Colossians, Colossians chapter 3 verses 12 to 14, patience, kindness and forgiveness are there. So what I am saying is, is all reflect the same thing. So when we talk about godliness or character, fruit of the spirit, righteousness or holiness or even love, we are talking about the same thing. Same thing. 
but different words are used. So when Christ's character is being shaped in us, our ingrained behaviors, our default actions and reactions will be like Jesus. So the question this morning is, as we have entered the new year 2018, how you reflect Jesus in your life? Is, uh, is others able to see Jesus in your life? How are your character? So how do we know if we have a particular trait or not? It's very simple. First of all, it's the pattern of behavior. It's a pattern of behavior. Secondly, it's a pattern of behavior under stress. When you are going under stress, only you will know what character you have. Amen? Amen? So if you think someone is very godly or someone is having Jesus character, just pinch him and see whether he has truly had that character. Amen? Also, it's a pattern of behavior when no one is looking, no one is around. So you may ask the question, so why should I want to grow in my character? Why should I want to grow in godliness? Why should I uh, want to grow in holiness? Why should I want to grow in righteousness? Why would I want to have the fruit of the Spirit in my life? Why we should desire to grow our character? Certain things are very clear in the word of God. First of all, we should desire to grow in character is because God's, God requires God requires it from us. In other words, God has commanded us. It's a command. God has given a command for us to grow in the character. God commands it. Uh, Colossians chapter 3 verses 5 to 10. Colossians chapter 3 verses 5 to 10 please. So put to death therefore, put to death, and it's a command, put to death therefore, whatsoever, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, yeah, go on. Sexual immor immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is adultery. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must rid yourselves of all these, all such things as these anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self and with, these, with its practices and have put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Amen. So it's very clear. Put on, put to death, therefore. All is going on. It's a command. Even when you read First Peter chapter 1 verses 15 and 16 which we read earlier, it says, But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, he be holy because I am holy. It's a command. So the list going on is a command. However, there is another great reason to desire growth in character. The reason, the second reason is, even though God has, Jesus has commanded in different portion of scripture, God has said another thing, that with this command, there are promises connected with that. With the command, there are promises. For example, if, uh, can you read 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 4? Given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in his divine nature, escape the corruption in the world. Yeah. So he says, through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises. Promises. When you grow in the character, he has, he has promised certain things. So godly character or the fruit of the spirit in our life comes with promises. Also, First Timothy chapter four, verses seven and eight, he says, train yourself to be godly. For physical training is for some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life as well as the life to come. The promise God has given. So we must grow in the character because He has, he has, given, he has given certain promises attached to that. So if I go further, the scriptures, if you analyze the scriptures, so you may ask a question now, how can I grow in the character? 
It's very difficult sometimes you may say, how can I have the character of Jesus? How to grow? How to make sure? You may ask those questions. Is it myself? I, I must uh, try to be more holy or more go godliness? Can I develop these characters? You may ask those questions. But I, we are going to read, uh, book, see the word of God, how it says, the scripture themselves expect that we will intentionally attend to our character formation. If you will, I'm going to read certain portions. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, please. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. So he says, let us purify ourselves. In other words, you have to purify yourself. Let us purify ourselves. Perfect in holiness in our holiness out of reference for God. Was the Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. He says, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You have to work out your salvation. Or the first Timothy chapter 4 verse 7 says, train yourself to be godly. You must train yourself to be godly. Or the same first Timothy chapter 6 verse 11 says, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance and gentleness. So you must pursue. Then second Peter chapter 1 verse 5 says, make every effort to add to your faith, goodness, and the goodness, knowledge, and so on. Make every effort. You must make the effort. If you are just gone, want to be passive, if you do, you are not making effort, nothing will happen. So God says very clear. Make every effort to add to your faith, goodness. Also, Second Peter chapter 3, verse 18 says, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Grow. You must grow. So clearly, we are commanded to take initiative to change our character. Amen. You must, we must take initiative. To change our character, it means the word of God is there to cleanse us. Word of, word of God is there so that we can grow. So we must take time. We must discipline ourselves to read the word of God. We must discipline ourselves to study the word of God, meditate the word of God. So where word of God will help so that we can mature in the character of Jesus. Amen. So clearly we are commanded to take initiative to change our character. If we don't understand this, we will fail to do anything about our character. And what will happen is we will continue drifting along for the reminder of our days, reminder of our lives. So God doesn't want that. But I have heard people say, sometimes they say things such as, well, that's just who I am. I can't change myself. Have you heard that? Or you have you said that? Well, yes, that may be how you are. But remember, that's not the way you are supposed to be. God can change you. Amen? Someone may object the changing patterns of behavior. It's so difficult, you may say. It's very difficult. Yes, it is. But the good news is, God doesn't leave us alone in this. He, stand, he stands there to help us. He is standing there to help us. Amen. He is there to help us. We have His divine power available to help us. Can you read 2 Peter 1 and verse 3? 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. He says, His divine power has given us has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Amen. His divine power has given us everything. His divine power. So we have his divine power available to help us to grow our character, to mature in our character, to be, become more like Jesus. The divine power is available. <coughs> So in fact, not only is divine power available, it is essential to make character changes. Uh, can you read John chapter 15, verse 5? John chapter 15, verse 5. I am the wine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. 
Apart from me, you can do nothing. Yeah. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So Jesus was saying, I am the wine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will be a much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. In other words, apart from him, without him, we cannot grow in the character. He is there to help us. He has given that divine power. He is available. That's the reason, Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23, the character traits, it says the fruit of the Spirit. What do you mean by fruit of the Spirit? The Holy Spirit is there to develop the fruit of the Spirit. When you baptize in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is there to help you. The divine power is available to help you. So when it comes to character building, God has to work in me and I have to work at it. Both must happen. In other words, the whole Christian life is to be lived out in an in intentional partnership with Jesus or intentional part partnership with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Otherwise, you cannot grow. You cannot mature. You will be the same person. We may say that we are in 2018. There are a lot of promises. Uh, this uh, church here, God is going to do certain things. Yes, true, that will happen. But if you are just waiting, nothing will happen. Amen. He was intentional. Have a partnership with Jesus, the Holy Spirit. He will help you to grow your character. He will help you. Amen. We must make every effort to grow our character. Amen. Amen. So this morning we are singing certain songs, starting with joy. Amen. Joy is one of the things, the character, character of Jesus. Amen? Amen? If you are mature in Christ, whatever the circumstances, whatever the problem you face, you will always be rejoicing. As Paul was saying in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. You will always rejoice. Amen? These worldly systems or worldly circumstances or problems will never put you down. You will be always a happy person. That again, the character of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So be, before closing, I want to say certain things about this year, which I have already said you know, last Sunday as well as 31st night. But again, there are certain things I want to share. 2018, some of the prophets, they are saying, is a year of alignment. In other words, you are coming back to alignment with the Almighty God. Is a div I can say this way, it's a year of divine alignment. Also, it is a year of restoration of families. Also, this year, releasing the sound of increased rejoicing. In other words, church will be rejoicing Church means I am not saying only LWMC, the whole church will be rejoicing when they see the things God is doing. So if we are already in 2018, you don't need to wait next week. It can happen today. Hallelujah. God is there so that our joy will be full. He is there to help you. Uh, can you read Psalms 23 and verse 5? Psalms 23 and verse 5. Psalms 23, all know, most of you know by heart. So, verse 5, please. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Yeah, my cup runneth over. My cup overflows. In other words, God will fill you with more joy. God will fill you with more of His character. You will see that as the theme As you allow the Holy Spirit to penetrate in your life, you will see that God will help you to grow more like Jesus. Amen? Can you read uh, John? Chapter 15, verse 11, please. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Amen. There again, these things I have spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Your joy must be full. 
God is there to help you so that your joy will be full. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I will read this verse and then close. Romans chapter 14, verse 17, please. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So, this year we will see the righteousness in the church as well as outside. That his righteousness will increase. Also, you will see His peace will prevail. His peace will increase. Also, his joy will increase all over. Amen. For example, how the joy will increase if, you, if someone comes to the presence of God and if they are very sick for some time and it may be a terminal disease, when Jesus miraculously heals them, what will happen? They will be rejoicing. So that's going to happen all over the world. All over the churches you will see that. Amen. I'm going to pull someone. Can I pull Gobi here? Because just to uh, see what's happened last Sunday, because it has started already. Can Kobe come and share what happened to you? God sometimes do multiple healings we don't understand. Put me on the spot, but. Uh, um for a while, for a couple of years, I had a skin issue. As some of you know, that uh, I get rashes and it, sometimes it gets really severe and it gets really itchy. Uh, so back of my foot here, uh, like during a couple, like two years ago, before the wedding and stuff, it got really worse. That um, I was scared to wear shorts and stuff because I don't want to, you know, show it. So last Sunday while we were worshiping, um, I felt for well, the pastor and out like for prayed and he said um, someone with skin. Issue that gets really itchy and that, that's being healed right now. And um, I, I prayed and I took it in, uh, in faith and I'm like, okay, I'm healed. So I, then after the service was done, I went home. And then while I was looking, I said, like, it's all clean, like nothing. It's like, uh, it, it's all, it was unbelievable. It's only was in shock. And, um, so it's just all God. So, amen. Amen, amen. So these things will increase you. These things will increase more. Amen. <coughs> not, not even to hear Pastor Gray, no, 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 no. While you are outside with your uh, uh, colleagues in your workplace, you will see signs and wonders happening. That's going to happen. Amen. And, and so that many, many, many men will be added to the kingdom. Hallelujah. Because <coughs> God, Jesus, in turn, He is going to do that so that church will be built. Church will be prepared for His soon coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall you stand to your feet and look to the Lord? So God wants you to mature in your character. God wants you to become more like Jesus. That will happen only if you can allow the Holy Spirit to take control of your life. If you are holding on to yourself, you want to live your life for you, then nothing will happen. But if you say, Spirit of the Lord, I am healing to you. Help me Lord. Help me Lord. I want to be more like you. I want your character to be reflected in and through my life. I want to be a kingdom builder. I want to be a partaker in your kingdom. I want to be a worker in your kingdom. I want to live for kingdom purpose and purpose alone. If you can say that, God will help you to mature in His character. He wants every, each and every one of us to become more like Him. More like Him. More of His love. More of His compassion. More of His peace. More of the godly character He wants us to have in our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Open your mouth and speak to Him. Even at this day, even at this moment, God sees your heart. God knows where you stand. How we say character, God knows. Even your parents or colleagues may not be your character, may not see your character. They won't understand what your inner man is holding on to. But God sees. God wants you to put off those unwanted things and to put on His character. 
His character. This is a year you will rejoice more. His joy will be fulfilled in this year if you yield to Him. Why we should grow in His character? Because if He has commanded us. Why we have to grow in His character? Because with this command, He has given promises. Promises attached to His this command. So those promises to be fulfilled in our lives or claim those promises, we have to grow in His character. When you mature in His character, the demons will not stand against you. They will flee away from you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Any sickness will not stand. They will flee away because Jesus is above everything. He is so powerful. So allow the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to penetrate in unto you. Hallelujah. 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 Open your mouth and speak to you. Open your mouth and speak to you.